Hi everybody, it's Adam with HeartValveSurgery.com and today we're answering your questions all about bicuspid aortic valve repair, aneurysms, and the potential calcification of Dacron grafts. I am thrilled to be joined by Dr. Kevin Akala, who is a leading cardiac surgeon at Advent Health in Orlando, Florida. During his extraordinary career, Dr. Akala has performed over 14,000 cardiac procedures with more than 8,000 involving some form of heart valve repair or heart valve replacement. Dr. Akala, it is wonderful to see you again and thanks for being with us today. Well, Adam, thank you. And it's always a privilege to be with you. And uh, heartvalvesurgery.com has been such an instrumental thing for our patients. Dr. Akala, we're gonna get to the patient's question, but first I wanna take a minute and acknowledge you and your entire team there at Admin Health. We've known each other now for over 10 years, and you are one of the first surgeons to support our educational mission. And in addition to that, Dr. Akala, you and your team have treated, successfully treated so many patients with heart valve disease from our community. So on behalf of everybody here, thanks so much for supporting us. Well, I, I appreciate that, Adam. And I've always been an advocate of community-based grassroots educational processes, which you initiated, and it's been so successful and our patients are so appreciative. It's really helping patients reach out to other patients, and that's so important. Dr. Akala, let's get to Nikki's question, and it's a great one. She asks, hi, Adam, my son had a bicuspid aortic valve repair and an aneurysm repair with a Dacron graft. Will this graft last forever or does it eventually calcify? Well, Nikki, that's a, a great question because we talk a lot about the valve procedure itself and the longevity of that. But I got to say, not too many people inquire about the graft, which I think is a, a very valid point. The, the Dacron graft is made of a synthetic product that, yes, it can fibrose some and, and it might get a little stiff and non-compliant. Uh, and really, that's it's, it's a mechanism of repairing or replacing the aorta to become the conduit from the heart to the rest of the body. Sometimes it does calcify, but really in very uh, unusual circumstances. Typically, it be, just creates a fibrosis within the graft or around the graft itself. So rarely is calcification a problem or a concern uh, in these patients who've had a Dacron graft replacing an aorta. Dr. Acolyte, Nikki, as a mom, has a wonderful follow-up question for her son, which is, will he eventually require another operation during his lifetime? Well, Nikki, that's a very fair question. And those are some things that we can't answer with an exact years of longevity of the valve. Oftentimes the valve that can be repaired is repaired because it provides the capability of not requiring a valve replacement until possibly later in life or other technologies that may become apparent or uh, available later in life. In regards to the bicuspid valve, it all depends on the anatomy of the valve. If the leaflets themselves remain mobile and structurally sound, that valve could last many, many years. Sometimes though the leaflets can become thickened and in a bicuspid valve, calcification processes can occur. And so yes, there's a possibility that he may require a reoperation at some point to address the valvular problem, i.e., if it becomes a leaking valve or if it becomes a stenotic valve. And then at that point, it would just require another operation to most likely then replace the valve. Dr. Akala, great points. Now I've got to ask you the question for Nikki and her son what would be your recommendation for them going forward? Well, Adam, recommendation of going forward is Nikki's son needs to be followed up annually, at least with an echocardiogram and an exam by, by their physician, just to be sure that there's no changes in the valve, that it's gotten thickened or fibrotic or a leaking valve. The other thing I think that, that Nikki should look into is a bicuspid valve can be a congenitally uh, genetically induced or inclined uh, circumstance with valvular pathology. And so uh, the other children or siblings should be checked with an echo at some point, particularly if they're getting involved in any athletic 
uh, type of events. Uh, and I think that once they're screened and everything's okay, then they shouldn't have to worry about that. Dr. Akala, so very important for patients with bicuspid aortic valves to have their families get screened. So thank you for bringing that into this conversation. And Dr. Akala, on behalf of all the patients at heartvalvesurgery.com, all the patients all over the world watching this, I wanna thank you for taking time away from your very busy practice there at Advent Health and sharing all of this wonderful research and clinical experiences with our community. Thanks for being here today. Well, Adam, thank you. It's always a privilege and it's just uh, such a pleasure to always see you as well. And so it, it's great catching up and thank you for uh, allowing me to participate in your program today. Hi everybody, it's Adam. I hope you enjoyed that video. And don't forget, you can always subscribe to our YouTube channel. Watch the next two educational videos coming up on your screen or click the blue button to visit parkvalvesurgery.com.